Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome to the video. Today, we're going to be discussing what a blockchain is in under five minutes. The Oxford Dictionary describes the blockchain as a system in which a record of transactions made in Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency are maintained across several computers that are linked in a peer-to-peer -peer network. But that's a very general definition. Let's take a deeper look at what a blockchain really is. A blockchain is basically a new form of database that stores data in blocks which are linked to each other through cryptographic keys. This approach is unique from the traditional way of storing information in that the old way of storing information would come from a centralized database. This decentralized database consists of multiple copies of the same data and each one of those copies are called database nodes. Once information is received as an input, every node immediately adds the new information. And once information is received, it cannot be changed or removed at a later date, meaning that it is permanently on the blockchain. Nodes are places in the network where information is received and sent out elsewhere. So basically, every computer in the network is a node. There are definitely some more technical distinctions to be made here. For example, there's a slight difference between nodes and miners. Miners, a subset of nodes, are computers that both verify transactions and add them to the blockchain. There are some nodes that just verify transactions without adding them. So, all miners are nodes, but not all nodes are miners. Storing information on the blockchain means having each block of information linked with the previous block. This is achieved by each block containing a cryptographic key of the previous. This is called hash. In order to make a new hash for the new block of information, a massive amount of computer work should be done to confirm the transaction. This is called proof of work. Proof of work allows the blockchain to be resistant to hacker attacks, which is why you've probably heard of the term regarding cryptocurrency purchases. And only data that has been confirmed is allowed to be added to the blockchain. Proof of work is what allows this global network to come to a group consensus and verify transactions in a decentralized way. Here's the thing. Bitcoin mining takes computational work, work meaning effort and resources. Bitcoin miners run computers and spend money on electricity trying to add the next block to the blockchain. The likelihood that they do so successfully depends on how much computer power, how much electricity, and how much work they're putting in. What this means is the only way to effectively break the system is if you own over 50% of the computational power on the network and you're putting up the money for all that electricity. So if you own over half, then you can basically control the network and mine fraudulent blocks by yourself. At this point, given the size of the Bitcoin network, owning over half the resources on it would be almost impossible to do. It would be ridiculously prohibitively expensive. Proof of work has kept Bitcoin and many other cryptocurrencies safe thus far. So now that we have a better understanding of how a blockchain works, let's discuss where you can find a blockchain being used. The main use of blockchain currently is for cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Dogecoin. All of these cryptocurrencies live off of a blockchain and the chain allows for secure transfer of coins to occur. Blockchain technology is also seeing an increase in use among art, fashion, and entertainment. Some good examples of this can be seen in its use in NFTs and within the metaverses dozens of companies are now trying to implement with their brands. So now that we know of some examples, let's take a look at some of the benefits of using blockchain technology. One of the biggest benefits that you've probably heard of before is that blockchain technology is entirely decentralized. This means that there is not a centralized entity that confirms operations that take place on the blockchain. All members of the blockchain network are self-regulated and have their own stake on the process. Blockchain technology also ensures security of data, which is achieved by the use of algorithms and the proof of work concept. Transparency is also a huge bonus for using blockchain technology. Information that is confirmed on the blockchain network will stay there permanently and can be accessed at any point in time. And here's the key. Once you put something in a blockchain like Bitcoins, it's there forever. You can't come out. We have every single transaction since Bitcoin was invented. It's there since January 3rd, 2009. So that means it's the perfect place to put identities. It's the perfect place to put agreements, property rights, these kinds of things. And it's totally censorship resistant. Even if it's inconvenient data to a government, inconvenient data to an individual, you can't pull it out once it's there. So let's look at some examples of what's already been done. So Namecoin is a project that wants to replace the entire DNS system of the internet. 
you ever wonder why when you go to Microsoft.com or Google.com, how that all gets sorted out and who owns what, that's ICANN's DNS system. It's a centralized solution. They're based in America, a lot of international participation. Namecoin is saying, let's completely disintermediate everybody. It's a totally decentralized grid where we actually have a new DNS system. BlockSign actually allows you to take contracts like non-disclosure agreements, anything you can think of, and actually verify them and sign them using the Bitcoin blockchain at an incredibly low cost, less than a penny. Now, let's look at the transaction system. This is near and dear to my heart. I've started two ventures in the Bitcoin space. Both of them were funded in a distributed fashion. The second one was Ethereum. So this brilliant kid named Vitalik Buterin last year came up with this idea. He wrote this white paper, he's 19 years old. And I read it and I said, damn it, I have to help him start this because this is brilliant. And we decided to have a fundraiser. So we published a little address and we said, send a transaction. And over a course of 42 days, 9,011 transactions, we raised $18 million. And the cost to raise that money was only $350 in transaction fees a price of 0.002%. This is the magic that a young kid who's a college dropout living up in Canada can write a white paper, bring a team together on four continents, and within just a matter of months have a fundraiser for over $18 million to get his, the resources he needed to do something. And this is accessible to everyone. No one controls it. But like any other developing technology, there are also some drawbacks to its use. The main one here being the immense use of energy required to verify new additions to the blockchain. Large amounts of energy are spent on the computing power required to do these tasks. Even Elon Musk discussed via his Twitter account the high energy usage saying that Tesla would suspend purchases using Bitcoin due to the high level of CO2 emissions involved in the mining of Bitcoin. And due to the fact that data is permanently stored on the blockchain, users can't remove any of their data related to their activities on it. Meaning that once information is stored, it can never be removed, which could be a drawback for potential users. Plus, given that blockchain depends on a larger network to approve transactions, there's a limit to how quickly it can move. For example, Bitcoin can only process 4.6 transactions per second versus 1,700 per second with Visa. In addition, increasing numbers of transactions can create network speed issues. So until this improves, scalability is a challenge. And the final issue with blockchain technology is that it was developed for developers, meaning that the technology is not very user friendly and it takes a lot of know-how to implement the technology into various applications for commercial use. So that's our quick and easy explanation as to what blockchain technology is. If we missed anything or if you have any questions regarding blockchain technology, leave a comment for us down below. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss an upload. But again, thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.